Sydney, Santina, and Will from Rebel Recycles here in rainy Sydney, Australia. Again. Again. Today we're kind of bummed out. Yesterday we were meant to be drag racing and it got delayed because of the weather. So we're here today without race hangovers, but we're glad to be here. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Today we continue our conversation all about EFI tuners. We're going to go through their basic design and function. Uh, and how you install one on your Royal Enfield Twin. As always, we're going to define terms as we go along and include additional resources in the description of the video. So, let's get into it. Now that you've made some improvements in the efficiencies of your engine, it's time to maximize the power potential and the reliability of those improvements by carefully controlling the ratio of fuel molecules to air molecules in your combustion chamber and when to ignite them. To that end, we're going to have a look at two tuners today, the Power Commander 5 fuel module and the Powertronic piggyback ECU. Because they're very different, we're going to cover them individually. I'm going to start you off with the Dino Jet Power Commander 5 fuel module. This is the harness. The square box here is the module. You have piggybacks for your fuel injectors for the throttle position sensor and a ground wire. That's it, pretty uncomplicated. This will use the RPM and throttle position sensor to alter the fuel injector's pulse width based on the fuel trim table to affect the air fuel ratio. That's it. Some of the features of the Power Commander 5 are obviously it's compact design it's quite a small little unit and tucks nicely under your seat which is great um, also because it's dyno jet it speaks dyno jet software so when you put it on a dyno the tuning is pretty automated it has simple software that is easy to connect to and you can actually tune each cylinder individually it has additional options of a map switch, which we talked about last week. So you have a switch that you can switch between two different maps and you can add a quick shifter. We have noticed some confusion around this little module and that is that many DinoJet um, modules offer rev extenders and launch control. At this time, those features are not available for the Royal Enfield Twin. Let's talk about the Powertronic Piggyback ECU. Now, this uh, system comes with a bit of a more robust wiring harness than the Power Commander. Like the Power Commander, it still has piggybacks for your fuel injectors and your throttle position sensor, as well as a ground wire. But it also includes piggybacks for your ignition system. Uh, the other nice thing about this wiring harness is that it's already wired so that if you want to add the option of a quick shift or a map switch, they just plug right into that wiring harness. The Powertronic is in control of your ignition system, but the ECU, the stock ECU, can't know that. So it's with the use of these two ignition modulators that they sort of trick the ECU into thinking it's still in control of everything. Sort of like a Jedi, move along, move along, everything is fine here. So these work together just to keep the system all operating normally. Your Powertronic system also comes with this stock coupler. Now when you first install your wiring harness, you're gonna wanna plug this in and just verify that all of the connections are good. And then in the future, if you need to go back to a stock configuration for diagnostics or any other reason, you plug this right in and you're back to stock two. When you get your Powertronic, if you want to do the installation yourself, you download their R-Tune software from their website, and you can download maps from the website as well. However, the system comes with two maps already programmed in it for a stock 650. And I realize we may have neglected to mention that with either of these systems, you need a computer to install them properly on your motorcycle. So either you need to bring a laptop out to the shed or roll your motorcycle into the office, but a computer is a must have to do either of these. Uh, and I wanna mention that the Powertronic also does not offer a rev extender for the Royal Enfield Twin, but we'll get into rev extenders a little later. 
Now we're going to walk you through the basic mechanical installation of these two tuners and connecting them to the software and doing just the configuration that's required to get you up and running. Uh, we're, what we're not going to do is a detail how to install the tuner on your motorcycle because the instruction sheets that come with both of these are really pretty thorough and if you just follow them, you'll, they'll work out just fine. Uh, there is one caution that I want to give you. In either case, both tuners, you'll have to remove the seat, fuel tank, and both side covers. One thing about removing the fuel tank that you need to be really careful about is this quick connector for the fuel rail. Right? That quick connect on the fuel rail uh, is on, in there on an angle, and it is really tough to get to this front trigger. There's a trigger front and back that you have to squeeze together to remove that quick connect from the fuel rail. This is an operation that requires finesse, not force. If you don't have these completely triggered and you pry on this to try to get it loose, it's really easy to break this plastic fuel rail. When you do, that's not something you're going to fix with duct tape. You're not going anywhere until you have a new one. So get both triggers completely released and gently lift this quick connector off that fuel rail. If you go on the wrong angle and pry it, going to ruin your day. First up is physical installation of the Power Commander fuel module. It's really straightforward. It is just the fuel injector connectors. That's the one that goes to the harness. These go to the fuel injectors. Then you have the throttle position sensor. That guy goes to the harness. That guy goes to the throttle position sensor on the throttle body. And you've got a ground wire. Once those are all connected, the only thing left to do is lay in a couple of zip ties and take the velcro that's supplied with the kit and stick this guy on top of your original ECU and the hardware installation is done. Of course before you begin you've got to go to the Power Commander website, download the software and install it on your computer. Then you've got to connect the USB cable that came in the kit between the module and your computer. Now you're ready to go. You come over and launch the software You'll notice the first thing that happens when the software launches is that it reads the map from the module. So this is the fuel table that came supplied with the module. Um, first thing you've got to do before you can run the bike is configure, uh, calibrate the throttle position. So you go up to Tools, Calibrate, Throttle Position, click the Reset button, and just roll the throttle wide open a couple of times. Click the OK button and throttle position is complete. Now before we start the bike up I'm going to put some values in a few of the cell tables just so you can see the fuel adjustment here when we start the bike. So we'll just build a little transition ladder here maybe 5% fuel trim there, 7% here just to give you something to see. Now you don't have to tune at this detailed level. If you're new with tuners you can and probably is best, just use Power Commander Tools, Configure, and In-Field Adjustments. This is sort of like changing the jets in a carburetor. You've got low speed, mid-range, and high speed. So we'll just, again, put some uh, adjustments in here. We'll 5% low speed, maybe 4% mid-range, and I don't know, 3% high speed, just so that you can see in the fuel adjustment um, what happens when we run the bike. All right, now before you start the bike, you need to send that map to the module. And once you're done, now we're ready to start her up. When we do, you can see the fuel adjustment is at 5%, even though this cell is at zero at idle. And that's because we put 5% in the low speed adjustment in the in-field adjustments. And now as you rev it, you'll notice that it's adding these fuel trim table adjustments to the in-field adjustments that we made. So just so that you can see how that all works, uh, you'll notice that as we rivet, the fuel adjustments moving around. So you would, uh, you know, if, if you're the novice rider, you just do those in-field adjustments, shut the bike off, be sure you've sent the map, and you're ready to close down the software. Once that's done, time to go for a ride. Hardware installation of the Powertronic is a little more involved than the Power Commander. It does have exactly the same connections for fuel injectors one and two, 
Uh, it has the same connection for the throttle position sensor and the same sort of ground connection. But then beyond that, you've got your connections to the ignition, which is goes right into the coil connectors, and they're marked actually spark one, spark two. Uh, and it occurs to me that we haven't said which cylinder is one and which is two. Uh, convention says that cylinder number one is the left side as you're sitting on the motorcycle, and that's true in this case for your spark connectors, fuel injector connectors, all of that. Cylinder one is the left, cylinder two is on the right hand side. Then you've got the connectors for the ignition modulators, and it doesn't matter which one of these you plug into which side. Uh, these are mounted on top of the battery behind the air box, and the connections obviously have to be made then. And then you route this connector around next to uh, the box where the original tool kit is. Uh, the ECU will ultimately be held in place by the rubber band that holds the tool kit in. Before you plug in an ECU though, you take this stock coupler and you plug it into the harness, turn the switch on, verify the connections, fire the bike up, be sure that it works like it's supposed to, then shut everything off and switch this out to put the ECU in. Once the ECU's in and everything is all strapped down, you're ready to connect to your computer and begin configuration. Assuming you haven't already, you will need to go to the Powertronic website, download the RTune software, and install it on your computer following the instructions. Then you'll plug in the USB cable supplied with the kit from the uh, ECU to the computer, and off you go. When you first start the Powertronic software, you're going to need to locate the COM port that the USB plug is on and click Connect to connect to the ECU. Now the switch on the motorcycle is not on at this point. Then you need to go down and click Receive, and this loads the data from the ECU into the software. Uh, so what you see here is the fuel map one that came with this new ECU right out of the box, and ignition map one, and then there's fuel map two, and this is for map one and two. So fuel map two, and we've got a switch on this bike, we'll switch it over to map two, so map two is now active. And this is the ignition table for map two. So you can see you've got independent fuel and ignition for map one, map two. Before you run the bike, or ride the bike rather, you'll have to do the throttle position configuration. So you come over into the config tab, and now it's time to turn on the switch on the motorcycle, start her up, and wait for all of the status lights to come on, let it idle for a minute, click calibrate, and follow the instructions on the screen. Uh, it will you let it idle at throttle zero for a, a bit, and when it tells you, you just crack the throttle wide open quickly a couple of times, It'll read that live data and establish minimum and maximum values for your throttle position. And then you're done. Click OK. Throttle position is done. Now, you would normally send and burn this to your ECU, but this is a brand new one, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to go over and load up a bike that we can change on a different cable and start the software up again. And again, I've actually connected to a different USB port. So I'll have to connect that. And go down and receive data from the ECU to pull in the maps. Now this is actually a live bike that's got headers and air cleaner on it. Uh, and we're just going to show you actual fuel trims. We're going to start the bike up. Let the status come live, and you will begin to see the adjustments happening in real time. There we go. So we've got fuel trim, you can see in these cells, based on the inputs in this fuel table. Now over here, you can see these zeros moving the fuel trim back to zero. So that just shows you the effect that the fuel trim tables have on the actual live fuel trim. Now you do have sort of broad stroke adjustments you can do here for a you know, beginning tuner. Uh, you can put in, let's say 4% here. Uh, that's for cylinder one and cylinder two. I've done a 4% increase in each and sent it to the ECU so you instantly see a fuel trim now of 8%. And you can see it moving around with the cell tracer showing you which cells you're actually in and the fuel trim being adjusted accordingly. 
and you can see that it's adding the 4% I've got in the fuel trim table to the 4% that I've got in the fuel trim broad strokes for the whole table. Now I'm going to take those back out because I don't actually want 8% fuel trim uh, at idle on this bike and I'm going to send that back to the ECU putting it back where it came from. So now let's have a look. We'll river around a little bit and you'll begin to see ignition advance changing. We'll go over and have a look at the ignition table so you can see live the settings in the ignition advance table and how it's actually affecting the ignition. You can see when we rivet a little on the higher side, it's actually beginning to take fuel out uh, up at the top. Now, you're also going to want to, you always want to send those changes and shut the bike off or shut the switch off and burn them before you disconnect the ECU or you could lose it. And that's really it. You make your changes, load it up, you're ready to go for a ride. So now that we've got you through all of the processes to install one of these and do the basic setup and configuration uh, and load a base map into it and, and be able to go ride, the next step is much more involved and more detailed and more precise tuning. We've talked a lot about air fuel ratios, uh, but we haven't talked a whole lot about ignition. I mean, I know we've said Powertronic will let you alter the ignition timing, but we haven't really gotten a lot into why. The whole idea, the objective of the combination of the right air fuel mixture and the right ignition timing is ultimately to burn the fuel as completely as you can and, and put the peak of that combustion chamber pressure on the top of the piston at just the right point after top dead center so that you put the most force possible on the piston pushing it back down against the crankshaft to turn reciprocating motion into rotating motion. There's an old saying in drag racing, lean is mean, but fat's where it's at. And that's very true. That's because the reality is the, probably the absolute peak of power is right at the verge of too lean so that you burn all of the fuel thoroughly and get the most that you can from that fuel and get the timing just right so that the peak of that pressure applies the optimum force to the top of the piston. They say fat's where it's at though because the reality is that absolute peak of power is right here and catastrophic engine failure is right here. So fat's where it's at means that adding a little fuel to that mixture uh, can run the, the combustion chamber will run cooler. Uh, you can alter the ignition timing. You can push the timing a little further with a little more fuel in the combustion chamber and it's all a balancing act. That's what you know, it's one of the things that race teams that are monitoring data, certainly we're looking at it at the racetrack all the time. It really is about finding that happy medium of an engine that will continue to perform over time. Uh, it can certainly have an effect on the longevity of your engine, uh, and it really depends on the kind of racing that you're doing. So uh, the very leanest mixture that, that you can make will make the most power, but generally speaking, you want to add a little more fuel to it and alter your timing a little. Uh, to make the thing live longer and, and make the combustion process a little safer. Um, so timing, the moral of the story I guess, is that timing is not something to be taken lightly. You don't want to just willy-nilly go changing your timing because if you advance the timing too far under the wrong circumstances, you can absolutely cause detonation. And detonation breaks things. If you get detonation in an engine under high load at high power, that's what knocks holes in the pistons uh, and all kinds of nasty things. So uh, you want to be really careful altering your ignition timing. Uh, basically, you don't want to alter timing by the seat of your pants. You want to use data uh, to alter the ignition timing to make the most power. Then the question is, do I need a rev extender? Um, and the answer is almost always no, you don't. Uh, there are circumstances, the only circumstances where you really need to extend the standard rev limit is if you've got an engine that is breathing and making power potential well beyond the original equipment red line, um, then maybe it's time to think about it. So, for example, our drag bike, we're actually, it, it peaks and we're shifting it right at the original equipment red line. So 
we are actually extending that rev limit out about 1,500 RPM, uh, 12, 1,500 RPM beyond the original red line. But that's because that's where it's making peak. It's you know that's where our maximum shift point is, is right at the original red line. So if you're drag racing, maybe road racing, uh, with an engine that will breathe, that is continuing to build power at and beyond the original uh, rev limit of a, of a standard bike, then great, you could probably use a rev extender. Uh, but the reality is for most other kinds of racing, probably flat track, certainly hill climb, that kind of thing, it's not, if you build the right torque in the right place, you don't need to rev it uh, beyond its original rev limit. And I guess the bottom line is if you're riding your motorcycle on the street, you absolutely don't need a rev extender. Uh, now, having said that, we're getting a lot of questions about, there's a rumor out there that uh, with the Powertronic, the rev limit can be extended, and that's true. It, it, doesn't, uh, it doesn't have that capability out of the box in its stock configuration, uh, but because we're running one on our race bike, they did build uh, a harness for us that has a crank position sensor and enables a true uh, rev extender. Um, and if you have a need, if you're actually building a race motor that, ha that will breathe and make power and you have a need uh, to extend the rev limit, um, give us a call because we can, with a Powertronic, we can make that happen for you. And finally, last week we promised to show you some dyno charts for some before and after. So we're actually going to show you some stock bikes in a couple of different configurations and some with and without tune charts. Um, and we'll put those up full screen and just voice over them. So without further ado, let's do it. We've done a lot of testing as well as compiling published results from a number of other reliable sources. First, we need to establish a baseline for what you should reasonably expect from your stock vehicle. The figures published by Royal Enfield for the stock bike use SAE smoothing and derived torque, as do all the dyno results that we're using for our direct comparisons. Now having said all that, Royal Enfield's published numbers for a stock bike are 47 horsepower at 7,250 RPM and 38 foot-pounds of torque at 5,250 RPM. While every bike is different, it's reasonable to expect the average stock 650 to produce something like 43 horsepower and around 38 foot-pounds of torque at the rear wheel. For all of our percentage increase calculations, we're going to use an average of the stock bike results that you see here. The average stock bike, based on this, is going to be 43.61 horsepower and 38.88 foot-pounds of torque. So today we're going to look at some results uh, of just the modifications we've talked about so far. This first chart is a completely standard 2019 Interceptor. This is the heavy-duty magazine bike before any modifications were done to it. As you can see, the stock bike makes a very reasonable power and torque curve, and at almost 45 horsepower and 40 foot-pounds of torque, this one makes 3.5% more horsepower and 6% more torque than the baseline average. Next is the bike we showed you last week. It's fitted with an SNS air cleaner, SNS race-only mufflers, a set of Revelry Racing headers, and an SNS cam, as well as a Powertronic tuner. At 52.36 horsepower and 44.3 foot-pounds of torque, that's better than 21% more horsepower and 14% more torque than the average stock bike. The difference you can feel when you ride this bike is really how broad the torque curve is. Now, to answer the do you need a tuner question, here's a chart of the exact same bike with the Powertronic ECU removed and replaced with the stock coupler, making it run right back on the stock ECU. And yes, we did let the stock ECU adapt a bit before we did the run. The exact same configuration without the tuner gave us just 50 horsepower and 42 foot-pounds of torque, which is only 16% more horsepower and 10%, well, almost 11% more torque than a stock bike. That's down nearly 5% and a little over uh, in horsepower and a little over 3% in torque. So I guess that answers that. We're always saying, if you're not testing, you're guessing. So we're big fans of dynos. But it should be said that you can't read throttle response or smile factor from a dyno chart. 
You really got to go ride it to know. Thank you so much for joining us again on this part two of EFI Tuners. We hope you got some value out of it and that you learned something that's helpful for you with your 650. Uh, we are curious to know if you already have a 650, are you riding an Interceptor or a Continental GT? Let us know in the comments below and make sure that you subscribe and ring the bell and share and like and all those good things. We appreciate it. Uh, we wanted to let you know, you know, Rebel Recycles is not just a workshop. We are a full-scale Royal Enfield dealership, and also we are a location for Eagle Rider motorcycle rentals. So you can rent these beautiful motorcycles from us as well. And we hope that for those of you that are elsewhere in the world, once the world returns to normal, please come to Australia. It's so beautiful. Our roads are amazing. It's such a lovely country. Come ride with us. We'd love to see you here. So next week, we're finally going to get into big bore kits. Yay! <laughs> so we'll be showing you all the components, some of the operations required, some of the machining and that. Um, we've actually already got a lot of video of the assembly process because we've managed to shoot footage already of some of the bikes we've built. We'll be showing you dyno results from various different 865 configurations. Uh, so we're really kind of looking forward to it. And don't really know if it's going to be one video or two, but uh, we'll find out next week. See how it goes together. That's it. Until so, then, remember. If you ain't having fun. You're doing it wrong.